Okay, so good morning everybody. Welcome back to uh, the video blog. I'm not sure if this is ever going to make it um, on air to YouTube. I, I just don't know what I'm going to be putting out as far as the video blog, uh, the behind the scenes and whatnot, but I haven't done any type of video blog probably in, I want to say a good two or three weeks just as far as the skating goes and whatnot. I've been quite busy and I'm not doing any type of video blogging right now at the Oval on purpose. I just don't want to get involved in any type of legal matters or conflict of interest or anything of that nature. So it's two days after the podcast we shot, the video podcast for Nancy Swider Peltz Sr., four-time Olympian, two-time world record holder in the 3000 and the 10K unofficially in Calgary, eight-time time trials, uh, in a row for speed skating. So what you kind of see here is the setup we kind of had for the uh, for the video. Um, I kind of added a couple things now for effect. Um, we had this up over here as far as the USA and everything else you see out here uh, was actually in a case and I kind of took it apart on purpose to kind of display everything and, and that was kind of my goal I, I took pictures of everything I was up last night for hours literally taking pictures of every single pin you see here everything you see here uh, for some a good amount of detail uh, per se and also of all the 8x10s uh, she brought so there's one thing that I did not go over in the podcast that I wanted to go over with her which was a more in-depth description of what I call auto ethnography which I which I started in grad school so I'm just gonna kinda go over a couple things and I'll probably end up overlaying some of this in the beginning of the podcast I I'm not sure yet I, I just don't know how the audio is gonna turn out but so far I'm extremely impressed with the H6 you don't see it in the frame right now but I use that for the stereo shotgun mic and honestly it's maybe one of the best investments I ever made listening to the audio on Sunday night I think we have a solid, for sure, three hours of a solid interview for audio, possibly four or five. It just really depends on what I cover and what I decide to put in and take out as far as overlaying pictures, audio in the background. Because, for example, when she walked in, audio was rolling from the minute she walked in the hotel room. And that was done on purpose because she ended up talking about uh, her pictures right away. And I could easily overlay that with some of the pictures that I took. Um, from many many different perspectives so I'm just gonna read quickly what what I'm talking about as far as what is auto uh, ethnography uh, the website is brianhoy.com b-r-i-a-n-h-o-e-y.com backslash research back, backslash ethnography and I'll be including this in the show notes too because this is the website I'm, I think I'm gonna be referencing quite a bit so the name of the podcast, everybody, is Stefan Speaks Storytelling Through Narrative uh, Life Experiences. Now, I came in with some branding issues. I bought the website name StefanSpeaks.com, which is my spelling, S-T-E-F-A-N-S-P-E-A-K-S.com. However, after doing some more research, I've come to the conclusion that there's another gentleman by the name of Stefan, S-T-E-P-H-A-N, I believe, and he has the same exact website as me, except he focuses on relationships and love. And that's all fantastic, but that's not really my goal with this. My goal to, with this is, is more or less narrative life experiences with speed skating um, and marketing what, what I do for a living uh, to a point as far as professional tour management, XM marketing, and experiential marketing. So he, he looks quite different than me, obviously. He has dreadlocks. He's African-American. He's a lot leaner than me. He's got a very large social media presence as far as YouTube. He's been on TV. Um, he's got a very large presence. So I discussed with Nancy possibly changing her on some of the branding. Not changing the name of Stefan Speaks Storytelling through Narrative Life Experiences, but just the website name. So we kind of came up with Jacko Speaks, um, Cognac Speaks, something on a play off my last name because Speaks is actually pretty common after doing some more uh, research, which was my fault in the beginning. So I'm just going to read exactly what I have here right now as far as the narrative life experiences. So uh, the storytelling through narrative life experiences, podcast questions. Um, so I'm going to go through this a couple times. 
So what is autoethnography? What is autoethnography? To go through the history of what is autoethnography, I think I need to take a step back and explain why I know what this concept is and where it came from. So when I was in grad school in 2000, our professor in our methods class, Dr. Mark Borzi, had us write about our narrative, well, our, our experience in grad school. It's called ethnography. It was a fairly new bis discipline about 20 years ago uh, to the area of communications in academia. There's an article written by Ron Pelius, Dr. Ron Pelius from Southern Illinois University called The Critical Life. And I kind of looked at that called The Skating Life. The Critical Life was just his perspective of being in the academic ivory tower per se every day uh, over at Southern. And he was good friends with my professor, Dr. Norman S. Greer, may he rest in peace. Uh, and he came to speak to our class. We first read the article called Narrative, I'm sorry, called The Critical Life. And it was a very rich, rich texture based in anthropology, philosophy, and anthropology. Uh, more, more from that perspective, and I'll get into that soon. I think I still have some of my autoethnography notes from this semester. So basically what we had to do is talk about and write about our experience in grad school every day to ourselves like nobody else was reading it in theory except our professor. So we had to turn this in once a week, it was just the journals, and at the very end of our semester we had to write a paper based on our experience in grad school and kind of seeing ourselves grow, whether that's struggle, succeed, and just a wide variety of topics. So that's where the idea of autoethnography came from. Nobody knows what autoethnography is at the end of the day. It's an academic term. If I say narrative life experiences, what, well, what's the narrative? A narrative meaning a story. It, it's a little bit different. So that's where the idea of Stefan Speaks storytelling through narrative life experiences came from. And Molly, which is my former project manager from American Express, our very first guest, kind of helped me come up with the uh, concept too to a point. We kind of developed it over a couple of days and literally, I think it was two days before the podcast, one of my friends, Ariel West, I think I kind of texted it to her and that's where, where that kind of came from. And it just kind of stuck in narrative life experiences Hold on a second, GoPro just went off. So, so that is where uh, narrative life experiences came from. Everybody is the resident expert on their life. And, and I thought, what a great way to talk about skating, how skating has changed my life and what it's done for me. And it kind of evolved from there into road to US Olympic time trials, which is quite possibly might be in Milwaukee from what I understand from Nancy's conversation we're shooting for that at the Pettit Center, which would be great. But that's another topic altogether, but I just kind of want to pull everything together uh, and summarize from a cumulative perspective. So what I'm going to do right now is read what autoethnography is, and this is going to be more for the introduction to the podcast because I only went over the first paragraph of what autoethnography is. So we have a stereo mic right now, we have some lights on. This is just mainly for a, a fact, uh, which I'll get into later. So, what is autoethnography? What is ethnography? The term ethnography has come to be equated with virtually any qualitative research project where the intent is to provide a detailed, in-depth description of everyday life and practice. This is sometimes referred to as a thick description, a term attributed to the anthropologist Clifford Gertz, writing an idea of interpretive theory of cultural in the early 1970s. The term, the use of the term qualitative is meant to distinguish this kind of social science research from more quantitative or statistical oriented research. Two approaches, for example, quantitative and qualitative, while often complementary, ultimately have different aims. While ethnography, while, while an ethnograph, ethnographic, eh, while an ethnographic, Ethnographic, I'm sorry. While an let me start that over. While an ethnographic approach to social research is no longer purely that of the cultural anthropologist, a more pre precise definition must be rooted in eth ethnography's disciplinary home of anthropology. Thus, ethnography may be defined as both qualitative research process or method. Ethnographer goes beyond reporting events and details of experience. Specifically, he or she attempts to explain how these represent 
what we might call webs of meeting, girts again, the cultural constructions in which we live. Ethnographers generally, ethnographers generate understanding of culture through representation of what we can call an ethnic, I'm not sure if I'm saying it right, ethnic perspective, E-M-I-C, or what might be described as the insider's point of view. The emphasis is the representation is staged on allowing critical categories and meetings to emerge from the ethnography ethnograph encounter rather than imposing these existing models. An etic ETIC perspective by contrast refers to a more distant analytical orientation to experience. An ethnograph understanding is developed through close exploration of several sources of data using these data sources as a foundation. The ethnographer relies on a cultural frame of reference. And, and that's essentially what I didn't get a chance to read. I might have to read that probably three or four times right now to get this right because it doesn't sound right right now. So ethnographic approach, ethnograph, ethnographic, ethnographic approach and auto ethnographers. Okay. So what is ethnography? The term ethnography has come to be equated with virtually any qualitative research project where the intent is to provide a detailed, in-depth description of everyday life and practices. This is sometimes referred to as thick description, a term attributed to the anthropologist Clifford Gertz writing on the idea of an interpretive theory of culture. Of culture. Let me start over again. What is ethnography? The term Ethnography has come to be equated with virtually any qualitative research project where the intent is to provide a detailed, in-depth description of everyday life and practices. This is sometimes referred to as thick description, a term attributed to the anthropologist Clifford Gertz writing on the idea of interpretive theory of culture in the early 1970s. The use of the term qualitative is meant to distinguish this kind of social research, science research, from a more quantitative or statistically oriented research. I'm going to start that over again. What is, what is autoethnography or what is ethnography? The term ethnography has come to be equated with virtually any qualitative research project where the intent is to provide a detailed in-depth description of everyday life and practices. This is sometimes referred to as a thick description, a term attributed to anthropologist Clifford Gertz, writing on the idea of interpretive theory of culture in the early 1970s. The use of the term qualitative, the use of the term qualitative is meant to distinguish this kind of social science research from more quantitative or statistically oriented research. These two approaches, i.e. quantitative and qualitative, while often complementary, ultimately have different aims. While an ethnographic approach to social research is no longer purely that of the cultural anthropologist, a more precise definition must be rooted in ethnography's disciplinary of anthropology. While an ethnographic approach to social research is no longer purely that of cultural anthropologists, a more precise definition must be rooted in ethnography's disciplinary <sighs> can't even talk today. While an ethnographic approach to social research is no longer purely of while an ethnographic <sighs> While an, while an ethnographic approach to social research is no longer purely that of cultural anthropologists, a more precise definition must be rooted in ethnography's disciplinary home of anthropology. Thus, ethnography may be defined as both a qualitative research process or method one conducts an ethnography and product. The outcome of this process is an ethnography whose aim is cultural interpretation. The ethnographer goes beyond reporting events and details of experience. Specifically, he or she attempts to explain how these represent what we might call webs of meaning, Gertz again, the cultural constructions in which we live. Ethnographers generate 
understanding of culture through representation of what we call, might call an epic perspective, that is E-M-I-C. Again, ethnographers, ethnographers generate understanding of culture through representation of what we ethnographers generate understanding of culture through representation of what we might call an ethnic perspective that is spelled E-M-I-C or what might be described as the insider's point of view. This emphasis is the representation is thus on allowing critical categories and meanings to emerge from the ethnographic encounter rather than imposing these from existing models. An ethic perspective that is spelled E-T-I-C by contrast refers to a more distant analytical orientation to experience. An ethnographic understanding is developed through close exploration of several sources of data. Using these data sources as a foundation, the ethnogra an ethnographic understanding is developed through close exploration of several sources of data. Using these data sources as a foundation, the ethnographer relies on a cultural frame of analysis. So I'm going to read that again a couple more times. So this was the post I just put up last night of a picture I edited for about 30 minutes and I took a bunch of pictures because I wasn't sure what I was going to publish. So the inaugural title, Video Podcast on Speech Skating is a Wrap, as Nancy said. Our first guest is Nancy Swider Pelt Sr. In an epic historical interview, we spent three hours plus discussing a wide variety of topics that will truly be a unique perspective into all aspects of the sport. The irony is, is we scratched the surface on a diversity of topics that will be covered over future video podcasts. It is my honor to represent, I'm sorry, it is my honor to present a snapshot of Nancy's accomplishments. Four-time Olympian, Innsbruck, Lake Placid, Cerebro, and Calgary, two-time world record holder, 3,000, 10,000, competed in eight consecutive Olympic trials, Park Bridge Speed Skating Charter member in 1968, and club coach since 85 to present. I'm still in the process of editing the first two video podcasts and creating the iTunes page. Edited in CK Tonality, which is the editing program, and Forgotten Glory. Ironically, it looked the best. I appreciate your patience and just us. So that's just that. And Nancy, I'm sorry, Eva Rodansky was discussed in our video too. So we're going to go over that a little bit. And she was just very happy about that. So let me start over again with some water. Okay, so we're going to start this over again. What is ethnography? What is ethnography? The term ethnography has come to be equated with virtually any qualitative research project where the intent is to provide a detailed, in-depth description of everyday life and practice. This is something referred to as thick description, a term attributed to the anthropologist Clifford Gertz, writing on the idea of interpretive theory of culture in the early 1970s. The use of the term qualitative is meant to distinguish this kind of social science research from the more quantitative or statistically oriented research. The two approaches, i.e. quantitative and qualitative, while often complementary, ultimately have different aims. While an ethnographic approach to social research is no longer purely that of the cultural anthropologist, a more precise definition must be rooted in ethnography's disciplinary home of anthropology. Thus, ethnography may be defined as both a qualitative research process or method. One conducts an ethnography and product. The outcome of this process is an ethnography whose aim is cult cultural interpretation. The ethnographer goes beyond reporting events and details of experience. Specifically, he or she attempts to explain how these represent how this or these represent what we might call webs of meaning, Gertz again, the cultural constructions in which we live. Ethnographers generate understanding of culture through representation of what we call an ethnic perspective, and that is spelled E M I C, or what might be described as the insider's point of view. The emphasis is 
The emphasis in this representation is thus on allowing critical categories and meanings to emerge from the ethnographic encounter rather than imposing these from the existing models. An etic perspective, and it's pronounced, I'm sorry, spelled E-T-I-C, by contrast, refers to a more distant analytical orientation to experience. An ethnographic understanding is developed through exploration of several sources of data. Using these data sources as a foundation, the ethnographer relies on a cultural frame of analysis. And that is essentially a summary of what ethnography is and where it comes from. So everyone can have a bit of a foundation for when they're actually listening or watching, watching us. So the lights are a little bit washed out. I'm not really too happy about that, but it is what it is. I'm going to go over this one more time. Okay. So what is ethnography? What is ethnography? What is ethnography? The term ethnography has come to be equated with the term what is ethnography? The term ethnography has come to be equated with virtually any qualitative research project where the intent is to provide a detailed, in-depth description of everyday life and practices. This is something referred to as thick description, a term attributed to anthropologist Clifford Gertz writing on the idea of an interpretive theory of culture in the early 1970s. The use of the term qualitative is meant to distinguish this kind of social science research from the more quantitative or statistical oriented research the two approaches, i.e. quantitative and qualitative, while often complementary, ultimately have different aims. While an ethnographic approach to social research is no longer purely that of the cultural anthropologist, a more precise definition must be rooted in ethnography's disciplinary home of anthropology. Thus, ethnography may be defined as a both qualitative research process or method one conducts an ethnography and product, the outcome of this process is ethnography, whose aim is cultural interpretation. The ethnographer goes beyond reporting events and details of experience. Specifically, he or she attempts to explain how these represent what one might call webs of meeting, Gertz again, the cultural constructions in which we live. Ethnographers generate understanding of culture through representation of what we might call an epic perspective, and that is spelled E-M-I-C, or what might be described as the insider's point of view. The emphasis is this representation is thus on allowing critical categories and meanings to emerge from the ethnographic encounter rather than imposing these from existing models. An etic perspective, and that's spelled E-T-I-C, by contrast, refers to a more distant analytical orientation to experience. An ethnographic understanding is developed through close exploration of several sources of data. data. Using these data sources as a foundation, the ethnographer relies on a cultural frame of reference. I'm sorry, analysis. While an, let me start over again. So while an ethnographer while an ethnographic approach to social research is no longer purely that of the cultural anthropologist, a more precise definition must be rooted in ethnography's disciplinary home of anthropology. Thus, ethnography may be defined as both a qualitative research process or method one conducts an ethnography and product. The outcome of this process is an ethnography whose aim is cultural interpretation. The ethnographer goes beyond reporting events and details of experience. Specifically, he or she attempts to explain how these represent what one might call webs of meeting, Gertz again, the cultural constructions in which we live. Ethnographers generate understanding of culture through representation of what we might call an epic perspective, that is E-M-I-C, or what might be described as the insider's point of view. The emphasis in this representation is thus on allowing critical categories and meanings to emerge from the ethnographic encounter rather than imposing 
these from existing models. An etic perspective, and that's spelled E-T-I-C, by contrast, refers to a more distant analytical orientation to experience. An ethnographic understanding is developed through close exploration of several sources of data. Using these data sources as a foundation, the ethnographer relies on a cultural frame of analysis. Okay, so we're going to try this one more time, everybody. Um, um, I know. Excuse me, analysis. One more time. So ethnographers, ethnographers generate understanding of culture through representation of what we call an ethnic perspective, and that is spelled E-M-I-C, or what might be described as the insider's point of view. The emphasis in this representation is thus on allowing critical categories and meanings to emerge from the ethnographic encounter rather than imposing these from existing models. An etic perspective, and that is spelled E-T-I-C, by contrast, refers to a more distinct, distant, analytical orientation to experience. An ethnographic understanding is developed through close exploration of several sources of data. Using these data sources as a foundation, the ethnographer relies on a cultural frame of analysis. So that is essentially what autoethnography is. I don't know what's going to make it to air, but I just kind of wanted to go over a couple of things from there. So overall, I thought the podcast uh, went excellent. We ran into some production challenges. What I mean by that is my executive producer did not show up. So I pretty much had to do everything by myself, but that was the idea behind the podcast per se the video podcast is i can do this by myself completely so i'm trying to work with three cameras possibly four so there's a canon 80d here that's with a wide angle lens there's a gopro there there's a gopro there there's three lights there's a there's a zoom h6 on the top which is uh, just a microphone there's another road mic and then in the background there's also a GoPro going for time lapse. So the idea is that we can sit down and have a conversation and I can do this completely myself. There's a lot of challenges with that, especially with the GoPros going on and off and sometimes with batteries and whatnot. But we're refining the process. I'm learning a lot, which is a good thing. Um, as far as the video part of this, it's gonna take a longer time to edit, but it's a very natural flow and progression. The audio, the good thing about the audio is I can get the audio up pretty fast. So I think what I might end up doing is putting the audio out first and then putting the video together later because it's going to just be more time unless I come up with some type of production method to where I can get everything out fairly quickly. Because with Nancy's podcast, I think I shot, I want to say eight SD cards, almost full of 64 gigabytes. And that's everything from audio, video, taking hundreds, if not maybe a a thousand pictures literally of everything because if I take one angle of a picture I shoot that same angle angle it could be five to ten times just for the picture I mean nine times out of ten I'm not going to use 99% of it but I'm only looking for one shot like that one shot I just posted online I think I took 40 shots or somebody actually helped me uh, the front desk manager came in my room helped me with it shot probably a hundred different shots and I picked that one out of everything. There's other shots I can use, but I thought that was uh, the best one. So I do like this hotel better. We're currently in a Holiday Inn Express in Aurora, Illinois. It's about a hundred miles away from where I am. But as far as rooms being bigger, they're more modern. We have more light. I just like this open area a lot better. That Evanston and Evanston we have to pay for parking too which, which I'm not a fan of and I just like the fact that this is an actual Holiday Inn Express where I can go to the pool you know grab a quick workout in get some food in the morning so if we're running late for the podcast we can have somebody sit in the foyer grab some breakfast they've complimentary, complimentary breakfast here so this is another Point Break Hotel too and this is basically the setup we kind of had for the podcast I put that up right away when Nancy came in I put a USA skin that was in a case and we had a couple of things roaming around here and this is uh, a skate blade which I will actually do kind of a review on it in, in a little bit um, 
this is amazing to me. This is actually from the from the 1800s. So I think I'm going to wrap this up real quick and just kind of leave off on I, I think it was successful. Um, there's going to be a lot of editing involved. Um, I think this is going to end up turning more into a documentary for Nancy rather than just a video podcast because we covered a lot of things from several Olympics, from what went on in Sochi to the administration to just her life experience in general. And that's why we call it a narrative uh, life experience. So I'm going to leave it off on that. Like I said, I don't even know if it's ever going to make it onto YouTube, which is we call the podcast uh, behind the podcast. Like a lot of me just going over uh, what is ethnography will probably be cut out just because uh, I've been talking for the last two days straight and I'm actually pretty tired. I got to get into the city, return the lighting kit. The lighting kit did not go exactly as I expected. Um, we were missing one light right away. And then one of the small lights, the P100, charged in the morning when I first got it a couple days ago, and then it didn't work. And then it would only work on um, AC power, so they're gonna give me another lighting kit from that perspective. But the lights in general, I, I think are, are very good. Um, I'm gonna wrap this up. It's about 10.48. I gotta start getting everything going, um, drop everything off at Nancy's place head into the city, drop off the lighting kit, and then try to possibly skate today. I don't think I'm gonna be able to skate just for the fact that it's 11 o'clock already. I still got a couple things left to do uh, before I head into the city. So everybody, I appreciate your time. You kind of being patient with me on the process. Like I said, this might never make it on air. No one might ever see this, but if they do, um, this is a very in-depth process. It can be grueling at times. And editing is very challenging from the fact that you don't know what you want to see until you actually start seeing it on the screen. And I'm such a, I want everything perfect before I put anything out because at the end of the day, it's, it's my name on this. And obviously uh, it's, it's Nancy's name. And, you know, I want to make her or do justice for her and represent her in the best possible light. So as I said, everybody in my other video blogs, any day on the ice is a good day. No, any day podcasting is a good day too. And I hope this takes off and, and I start making some money at this, but I think it's going to be some time. So everybody have a great day. Have a great afternoon. Hopefully everybody had a great weekend. And I will see you the next time. Bye.